Well, welcome to uh, Windrush International Airways. We're going to uh, um, start the first of four videos looking at the southeast of Tasmania, and on this one we're going to be leaving Windrush International Airport and trekking off first of all to the west, and then after that uh, we'll curve off to the north um, along the upper Huon Valley um, and then over the uh, to the east over the top of the, the land to the Don Castro Channel and then into Bruny Island. So we're traveling west, we're about five, six hundred feet here as we travel over the um, Huon Estuary, over Port Huon and that uh, pier that you can see there is where the, where the boats used to travel to um, take all the apples to the UK before the UK joined the European community. And as we continue to the west, we're tracking over um, Geeston. Geeston used to be the centre of the timber industry here until the industry was more or less closed down by the last um, Labour Greens government a few years ago. A little bit of a ghost town now. And um, as we leave the inhabited area, we're um, around about uh, five miles from where we took off at this point. We're going to head for directly for Mount Picton for the moment. And uh, I thought the interesting thing here was two things, really. The first is how quickly you leave civilization behind and heading in this direction. There seriously is no human habitation until you get to South America, um, which is two thirds of the way around the globe. Um, Africa doesn't extend as far down south as 43 degrees, which is roughly where we are. So we're heading over the, the Hearts Mountains and towards Mount Picton. And Mount Picton is that uh, tallish mountain directly ahead. Um, which drops off sharply to the left and less sharply to the right. Um, remarkably pretty mountain. It's the, the, um, the tallest mountain that we can see from our property directly. And we only see the, the sharp bit at the very, very top. But as you can see, once you actually get there, that little mountainous looking thing is only really a little rock crest on top of a, uh, a high range of um, rather more... Um, smooth mountains. But uh, unfortunately, as we head along here, we can see that there are, there's a cloud bank coming forward. So um, I'd originally planned to take you further into the mountains, but we'll try that another day. Today, we'll, we'll turn to the right along um, uh, the River Picton Valley. And I don't know if you can pick out the, the river at the bottom. It's a very thin little river down there. And um, we're now starting to head north. And um, what I'll do is to um, to track back along the, um, the Picton River until we pick up where it joins the, the Huon River and then we'll turn east and then southeast um, and we'll go and have a look at the inhabited parts of our part of the world. But as you can see over here, although there has been bits of clear felling um, which are in the process of all being regenerated now, the latest one, the, the most recent ones, I doubt will ever be regenerated because the, uh, the forestry industry is closed and there's no in, in, uh, incentive for them to do so. Um, but much of it has been regenerates quite quickly. This area was also incredibly badly burned less than 12 months ago, and it's amazing to see how green it appears from the air today. Only 12 months later, all the, all the, um, the leaves have grown back really. But if we were down on the ground, we'd find that the trunks of the trees, the eucalypts, were black. So here we're heading down the, uh, the higher reaches of the, of the Huon River. And as we turn this corner, um, we'll um, start to track towards Judbury and then uh, Glen Huon. And Judbury, there's a, a little bridge across the river which should be fairly easily visible for us. And Judbury, you'll see, is, is not really a town as such. It's just a, a little locality down here. And we just you can just see the bridge now in the, towards the foreground, bottom left. And that little area there is, uh, is Judbury. And as we continue on up the river, um, the next township, which is on the right-hand bank, is uh, Glen Huon. And we just keep on going at 4,500 feet now, heading um, more or less east, east southeast, um, towards the main town of our region, Huonville. Huonville. The, uh, this is the, the Huon Valley, obviously. Um, and Huonville is, the, is a spot for the last bridge um, as, we, as you head seawards down the Huon Valley. So just here, the first, um, the first suburb is Ranelagh, and then right by the bridge there is Huonville, off to the left of it and just to the right of the, uh, the bridge. 
And where we left this morning was, if you look down the estuary to the, to the end there, it's just before the estuary turns left. Now we head out over this, um, further on to the east, over this mountain range or hill range, which is about 2,000 feet, but doesn't have a name as far as I know, um, towards Bruni Island, which is our, our destination. Our destination is, the, is the, the, the second block of land that you can see directly ahead. We're crossing uh, the Grey Mountains here, um, and the first piece of water that uh, we're going to come to is the Dontracasto Channel, um, which separates the mainland of Tasmania from uh, Bruny Island. And if you look at that uh, uh, bank line, there is a, um, an almost square oblong uh, harbour area, which we're going to fly more or less directly over. And that is where the ferry that connects the mainland to Bruni Island sails from. And uh, we're getting towards there now. And uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing now Bruni Island fairly clearly. Now the airstrip is on that uh, second piece of land that you can see, the, the, the one which is connected to the big South Island by a very tiny, very tiny thin neck of land. And, uh, our track will take us along the Dontracasto Channel here, um, over what they call Great Bay, and towards um, the left-hand side of that neck, which is where we're going to turn to come back to to land on the on the airfield on the on the left-hand side of that uh, on the left-hand side of that uh, block of land that you can see there. The far side of the neck is called Adventure Bay, and it's a uh, uh, well a huge bay um, over which there's a a little um, there's, a, there's a, um, a little fleet of aircraft that take people for joy rides over there and it's quite pretty you can see the airfield just on the very extreme left of the picture now and uh, we are descending now towards a thousand feet as we head towards um, the neck and we're now on uh, on downwind runway 32 for, for Bruny Island we'll continue along here at uh, 1,000 feet until we get to the right point to turn left onto the, uh, the, the base leg of our, of our trip into, into Bruni. And down we go and along. And you can see how thin the neck is. There is, in fact, a road that runs along there that uh, will connect the North and South Island. And uh, now off we go back to the On the uh, on the base leg, descending down to around about 500 feet, the uh, the strip is more or less at coast level, and here we come round over this lagoon, which is sometimes full of water, but this time of the year has become dry, and down we come, and that trip has been at about five times normal speed. Ahead of us, planes for the Bruni Island Scenic Tours and somebody's plane which has been parked as they're on holiday. <laughs>